Hello everybody, Stanley Yates. Uh, this is a short video dealing with fast little trills that I'm making for Fingerstyle Guitar Journal. I'm very happy and honoured to be featured in, in the journal this, this coming issue. So, trills, we all know what trills are. Um, we have a note, so it's this one. In the music there's a TR sign and we do a twiddle. A twiddle of some kind. Well, I want to talk about not ones well, we have lots of time, but ones that are very quick and that are, where notes are flying by very quickly. Now, there are two basic things we can do when we still see a trill, trill sign, or for that matter, if we just want to throw some trills in of our own that we like the sound of. So the, 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 the most straightforward way is to play the written note, play the next note up of the scale, and pull off again. They're main note trills, there's three notes, and they're very fast, and they sound good in very fast passages. If I have a bit more time, and this will be more correct, you know, in certain situations, we instead play that we play the note above instead and pull off twice. So that's uh, uh, an upper note trill, has four notes. Okay, so that's that, simple enough. We choose which one fits for our purposes at any particular point that sounds good. Now, there's another way to do these. In addition to slurring, we can pluck them all, all the notes with the right hand, but not on the same string. That'd be horrible. We find the notes on two different strings, and then we play across the strings. That's a three note trill. Here's a, a four note trill. So these suddenly sound a lot different. They're very fast. You can do them really fast. Um, they're very fast, they're articulate, they're clear, and they're kind of brilliant sounding. So we can use both these systems of trilling with the left hand or with the right hand, uh, and we just use them as we see fit and as, and as it suits our purposes. All right, so how do we develop the ability to to, to, to play these very fast um, cross-string trills and, and what's the fingering. Well, for the, for the four note one, um, what most people use, I think, is a fingering A, M, I, P. So it's like a tremolo, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, thumb, but across two strings, so. That's what most people use, and I think that's the one to go with. Now, I've never practiced that one, and um, because many years ago when I was younger, I learned a different one uh, that I much prefer to use. Uh, basically, I've made a kind of a, a virtue out of a, out of a mistake or something, but the, the, the fingerings I use for these trills, I use the middle and index, and then the ring finger and the middle. So this is M I A M, M I A M, and um, it doesn't use the thumb, so I can use the thumb for other things. Yeah, so I, I prefer that one. Uh, it's very easy for me now because I've done it for so long, but. I would probably not recommend starting with that one. It's probably going to be more difficult to start out with, but everyone's different, so you may find that that does work for you better than the AMIP. Anyway, you can figure it out. So there are the fingerings. Uh, if we have a three note trill, I would just use index A and M. You could also use um, I, M, yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan of the putting the thumb in all of this because the thumb can sound a bit different than the fingers, although I'm sure that's a problem that can be solved with practice, but I just like to keep my thumb out of it and use my fingers only and let my thumb do other things. Anyway, that's that. Um, how do we practice these? Because they have to be really quick and we can't think, just, just go do them. It's like rolling a chord. If we play a chord, 
after a bit of fiddling around, we can find the knack of just arpeggiating. And we're not really playing lots of fast notes when we arpeggiate, you know. We're just, we're playing a, a simple movement, but we're staggering the movements by playing them a bit sloppily in a way. Uh, I mean, I could explain what's going on there, but we don't need to know. We just need to get the feel of it. Anyway, it's the same with the trills. We want to look at these two fingers, the, the, the middle and ring finger. They're not very independent. Uh, we can't alternate very quickly. That's about as fast as I can go as compared to the other two, you know. But we can do little bursts very quickly using a similar idea. So, um, if I pluck these two fingers on the say on, on two strings, I can just roll them. But up or the other way around. It still feels like one thing to me. It's definitely not two separate movements. One finger pulls the other finger through. It's one movement, but it makes two notes. Now if we're doing arpeggios or tremolo, we need to be very careful about the timing of those things so that So that the you know it sounds the way it should. But with these trills, we're just trying to make the quickest possible pair of notes we can. Just boom. So once that's comfortable, you add the next little thing. So in the standard fingering, A M, you would add the index next. I'm just putting it on the string, just to feel where it's going. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna play, and it's just one little brrrr, one little movement. Then you would add the uh, thumb. And then you've got it. You repeat those gestures a lot of times, go through the process a lot of times, and over a period of, I don't know how long, a couple of weeks, a month, who knows, you know. It'll become automated in your system. Because to just, um, just to throw these things in without thinking, you know, you can't do it until they're completely plugged in. You just think trill and your fingers go, okay. So it takes a lot of internalizing. Like, you know, if you're playing an arpeggio, you're not thinking about the arpeggio anymore. You've, you've internalized it. Okay, so uh, that's how that works. If I was going to practice my fingering, M-I-A-M, I would take a similar approach. I'd start with A-M first, even though, even though A-M are not at the beginning of my fingering. So I'd start with those two. Let's just do it like this. A-M. Then I put index finger before that because I'm going to be doing M-I-A-M, I-A-M, and then I'll put the middle before that. And then I'll start putting my thumb, getting my thumb involved, as I want to do. So that's how you practice those things. Now, this might seem a bit too fiddly and convoluted. I mean, you know, we're not going to become you know, professional cross-string trill performers. That's not all going to be our job. <laughs> you know, we're just, we're just going to be guitar players. But um, there's other things you can do. If you can't, you don't feel this is for you, fine. Uh, you can just use the index and the thumb. It's just that it's not going to be as fast. It's very good and clear. So you can definitely do that. It sounds good, but it's going to be difficult to do very quickly if you're in a situation where you want to do a series of very fast ones. Um, another thing you can do is you can take the index finger and play the first two strings. as a kind of glissing over, and then the middle. And with a little bit of a movement here. Uh, I've never practiced that either um, with some work. I could probably get it better. I don't know how good it would get compared to my preferred one. But um, it just a little, uh, it's not, doesn't sound great to me that, but I'd have to practice it. But it's something you could, you know, in the heat of the moment, get away with, I think. Yeah, so there's some options for all of this trilling stuff. Um, so I'd, I'd like to just end now with uh, a, a little trick that I've been using along these lines for, for decades. I mean, 
I, I was, it just happened to me, my ear did it to my fingers. I was so reading through something, I really wanted to hear a cross string trill and suddenly I was doing one where it seemed impossible and it's like, well, how did I do that? So the um, thing about cross string trills, you need a left hand fingering to go with them, right? You've got, got to get the two notes on different strings. But what if we have something like this? What if our but we want to do it well can't <laughs> but I can do this so I'll leave that for you to work out it's a trick but what I think about these things is if it sounds good it's good all right that's it for this um, I hope you found it a little bit interesting perhaps you'll try some of this stuff out and might get some enjoyment out of it um, so again I'm very happy to be in the, in the in the current issue of the journal I hope you enjoy the interview and the arrangement and a little bit of a, an article I've written about the trills